and more importantly, how to monetize your TV show. You'll learn everything from set design, show format, tech, production, monetization, building audience, on-camera confidence, booking and interviewing amazing guests, and becoming the celebrity expert that attracts clients, customers, fans, followers, and the media. I uncovered the winning formula called the STAR method that will make you become a TV star. So sign up today to make your dream of becoming a TV star a reality. Hey there, it's Diane Forrester and welcome to I Have Today, where we talk about the art of intentional living. I am so excited to be here today. It's February and this is the month of love. So I thought I would bring in a love expert to you today. So I hope you're excited because you're going to meet Arlene Washburn. She is so fantastic. This woman is let me tell you a little bit about her she's the ceo of the country's only state licensed uh matchmaking school under her leadership the institution became a beacon of excellence training hundreds of aspiring matchmakers worldwide she now runs love pro mastermind academy her expertise and dedication to mentoring others in the fields that have shaped a new generation of modern matchmakers each equipped with the skills to create lasting connections and foster love and a belief in collaboration, not competition. She also created a worldwide referral network to help support daters by connecting them to either a matchmaker or one of their VIP clients. She has cracked the code in love in her own life and she's cracking the code for you. She's coming on in just a few minutes. So excited to have her on today. All right, so the name of our show today is Science-Based Dating and Relationship Coaching Works. Our advice works. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. What is science-based dating and relationship coaching? What is it all about? If you're a woman out there and the few good men that watch us here on I Have Today, we, we love you all, but most of our audience is women and most of our audience is women over 50 years old. Perhaps you're divorced, perhaps you're out there dating again, perhaps you're frustrated by the dating that you're doing. Uh, perhaps maybe you didn't want to date before and now you're ready for love. That's me personally, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm like, I'm finally feeling like I'm ready. I'm almost approaching 60, my 50s, I've been single pretty much the whole time, dating here or there. And it's really been a, gener uh, a decade of growth and development for me personally. So I cannot wait to have this conversation with Arlene today to find out what is actually happening out there in the world. And what are some of the beliefs that you have about dating? Do you believe that you know, all the good ones are taken and, um, you know, maybe you're not worthy of love or maybe you've given up on it and you're like, you know what, I'm just fine being by myself. Well, we're going to cover, uh, uncover all of this today. This is going to be a fascinating, fascinating episode. Now make sure you stay until the end because I end every show with a powerful mantra meditation to really anchor in what we're talking about today so that you can take what you experience today and not just have this be passive media that's coming in and out, you actually get it ingrained in your subconscious mind. So that's what we're about here. And part of the way that we do that, in addition to the mantra meditation at the end, is we also do a weekly intention statement. And our intention statement this week is, I have today to crack the code on my intimate relationship. <laughs> can't you wait? Just can't wait to hear from Arlene. How, what, what is, what's the code? What did she crack? So I have today to crack the code on my intimate relationship. Now, whether you are in one, you've been in one for a long time, maybe you're in a new one and it's growing, or you want one, 
we still want to say that we still want to put the intention out there as if it's already happened right so we want you to use this intention statement for this entire week. That's what we do. It's a weekly intention statement for this week's episode of the show. And how we help you do that is my team makes the most beautiful graphics. There it is. It's coming up on the screen right now. And I don't know what's going on with the tech here, but it's not working. Uh, team, I don't know if you see that or not. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening here. Oh, there. I don't know. Our screen's kind of messed up today. Uh, anyway, if you can see it right there, where you can find that is on my Instagram page. Oh, there we go. Um, on my Instagram page at Diane Forster Official. When you hop over there, go to my profile, give me a follow if you're not following me over there. And then there's a little button there and it says intention statement. So what I want you to do is go there. This graphic is already there. See it? When you find it, take a screenshot of it and use it as your screensaver for the entire week so that every time you look at your phone, you see this. It is your constant reminder. Say it in your head or say it out loud and start to affirm this and intend this. And that is how you rewire sub your subconscious and that is how you create lasting, positive, permanent change. All right. So check that out while you wire over there. So, all right, well, we're getting ready to bring up Arlene. I don't want to waste another minute because we have so much to talk to her about. I have so many questions. I'm so excited to have you here. If this is your first time here at I Have Today, I want to say welcome to you. And if it's um, you've been here before, I want to say welcome back. We are streaming everywhere. Right now we're on E360 TV. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're on LinkedIn. We're on X. We are also on every podcast platform as well. So lots of ways for you to find I Have Today with Diane Forster. So make sure wherever you're tuning into us, leave us a review, subscribe, rate, it would mean the world to us. Now we're getting ready to bring Arlene on, but before we do that, let's hear a word from our sponsor, The Spifter. This week's episode of I Have Today is brought to you by The Spifter. The Spifter is a fun sifting spoon that makes cooking, baking, and decorating with sugars and spices so much fun. No more mess or wasting your spices. It's fast, clean, and easy. Everything looks and tastes delicious. It's also great for straining loose tea, getting pesky broken cork out of your wine glass, and draining liquid off food like olives and capers. Whether you're a novice cook or a gourmet chef, you'll love the results. The Spifter, the kitchen gadget that no kitchen should be without. All right, so make sure you get your Spifter at Amazon. Well, hello, Arlene Washburn. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Diane. I love the way you open this show. It's so inviting and spiritual, and I love it. Oh, thank you so much. Well, you're a soul sister. I could tell already. I knew I wanted to have you on the show when I started learning about you. I said, all right, for the month of February, you know, it's the month of love. I definitely want to bring on a uh, matchmaking, dating, relationship expert. And you are all of that and so much more. We have so many great things to talk about today. And we actually met in a networking group. And when I saw you and I heard you, I was like, oh, she, that's it. That's, this is the woman that I want to have on the show. So, uh, so I'm so glad that you're here and we Me were too. able to make this happen. So I'm excited to be here. Yes. All right. So the first question I have for you is, um, we'll tell a little, tell everyone a little bit more about what you do more in depth than I just did right now. So we can have a true understanding of your background and your area of expertise, please. Absolutely. So I've been a matchmaker, a modern ma matchmaker, I like to say, for the past 12 years. And I took a sabbatical for a while there to run the only state licensed school for matchmaking and stepped down from that and got back into matchmaking. And these days, I just got called back into training again. So I am helping matchmakers to develop their business, to do good work and to be ethical. And one of the areas that they need support in is actually having a pool of daters and uh, folks that are looking for matchmakers. So 
I started this worldwide referral network where daters can join for free and they can potentially meet the clients and the VIP clients of these matchmakers. Or if they want to hire a matchmaker, they can rest assured that they're going to meet an ethical uh, matchmaker who does good work. They've been vetted by us and these are people worldwide. So I'm super excited about that because I don't know if you know this, but last year, I think it was the Surgeon General put out a report about the loneliness epidemic in the world, not just in this country. And so I just felt a calling of like, what can I do to change that? And I think that this worldwide referral network is an entree into, into really helping with that. It's so good. And this is part of the reason why I wanted to have you on. And as I very openly shared, you know, I've been single this last decade, all in my 50s. And I mean, I've dated here and there, I've been in a couple of relationships, but for the most part, um, have really kind of embraced being single. I felt like there was a lot I wanted to work on. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, and now I feel ready for a relationship and I'm not a dater. I'm a, like a, I'm a one man woman and a commitment person. That's just kind of how I am. And so I'm so intrigued personally. And I think I'm speaking for a lot of women out there. I think I'm speaking um, honestly and vulnerably for a lot of successful women out there because we tend to um, live more in our masculine energy, even though I'm very feminine in a lot of ways, there's a lot of masculine energy too. And I think that there's um, uh, a lot of questions that a lot of people have regarding like what, what is, uh, when is the right time to hire a matchmaker, you know, and, and, and what, you know, what are the, what's the criteria for it, I guess, is more the question, right? Great question. Uh, so hiring a matchmaker is something that's an amazing experience for many people only when they know themselves enough, they understand the belief system that they have, what makes a good partner for them. And so they can go to a matchmaker and be able to really provide the criteria that is, that's gonna make sense for them Everyone is, in, you know, every, everybody's an individual, right? So it needs to be that a criteria that makes sense in terms of if you're looking for a long-term relationship. So, you know, I know everybody has preferences and I respect that, but a man's height is not going to contribute to a long-term relationship. And I know that's an area that a lot of folks get hung up on. Um, and, you know, I'd love to talk about that one because only yes. 14 have percent of the men in this country are six feet or taller and how many of those are age appropriate or have the criteria that you're looking for and so you really weed out an entire population of wonderful men because you're seeking that so that's just one example of the kind of criteria that people have as far as choosing partners rather than focusing on the real things that matter like your key life values your core values did you say 14 percent of men? 14, 14, 14 and a half percent. 14.5% <laughs> of men are over six feet. You know, it is so interesting, isn't it? That that is the thing. Oh, I want him to be tall. I want him to be dark. I want him to be handsome. You know, all the things, right? Um, uh, I know. I know. I think that is such a powerful statistic. Everyone listening, ladies, if you're listening and that's your thing, take that off the list. Because 86% no. of men you are cutting out. Exactly. And the thing, this is why I consider myself a science-based relationship, you know, coach and matchmaker, et cetera, because I'm one of those people who have, I've been very driven my whole life, career driven. And I don't know, I wouldn't call it even a masculine energy. I was just very, you know, driven and I love business and all of that. But at the same time, I'm very incredulous. I don't believe things unless you show me the proof. And I spent 20 years in the pharmaceutical industry where everything was based on the data and you know the publications and studies. And so my approach to dating and relationship advice is very much based on the data. Of course, there's always a snowflake or a unicorn. <laughs> that doesn't apply to me. 
But in the majority, there's, you know, there's data that we can show now more than ever that will show you this is why I'm telling you this. Here's here's a really good study that that relates to it. <laughs> that is so great. And all right, let's actually let's go there. The science based piece of this. What led you down that road? So I grew up with a single mom and before she got married, she's 91 now. So you can imagine from her country and in that era, she got married in her maybe 30, 32. Back then that was considered like an old maid. Now that's the norm, right? Mm -hmm. So she was going down a path to become a nun. <laughs> and then met my father who was a player <laughs> and they got married. He cheated on her the entire relationship and then they got divorced. And so we grew up with the single mom, my sister and I, and her advice was really meant to bolster us, but it wasn't helpful. It wasn't helpful, helpful for choosing the right partners, for connecting, et cetera. And so I, I felt like I needed to find answers somewhere. And so I became a self-help junkie and started to take courses and really learn and try to understand about dating and relationships, which as I said before, it's now more prevalent, but for a long time, there was no real effort put into these, these types of questions about dating and relationships in terms of the data. So I'm always looking for good research, but that's really what sent me down the path because I was in a relationship for 17 years um, from my late ex-husband and he, you know, that didn't work out. And I'm like, okay, what am I not getting here? And that's, that's what happened. <laughs> so what do you recommend for people who are feeling like oh, I've done all the I've done all the dating apps uh it's just been nightmare after nightmare after nightmare um wh what do you recommend the first few things to do great question I would start with if you haven't been working with a coach and I'm not, this is not a plug, but a coach will guide you through the important steps of understanding your belief system, where it came from and what you need to release. And I'm a big fan of, we have spring coming right around the corner. I believe everyone should spring clean their belief system every year, because if you're not getting results in a particular area, it is a hundred percent tied to your beliefs because your beliefs will dictate what you say and what you do. Those things are always trying to be congruent. And so it starts there. And once your mindset is in the right place in terms of who you truly are, because often our beliefs are coming from other, you know, society, religion, parents, and they're not helpful necessarily, right? So once we know who the core of who you are, then you can begin to explore being in a relationship. Now, the thing about relationships is it's not what you get, it's what are you willing to give? Because relationship mm -hmm. is about giving, it's not about getting. Mm -hmm. And you will do it, will, you know, like you, people hear that and they're like, oh, I don't want that. But the reality is, is that you want to, you want to give because you're also going to get. Um, that's just part of the symbiotic relationship that you have. But I it just really want people to understand that the giving part is a very crucial part. So if you're in a point in your life where you're self-involved, and you're not ready to take care of other another person or care for another person, that's perfectly okay. That just means you're not ready. Yes. So beautifully said. I love that. Uh, that is a writer downer, everybody. That spring clean your belief systems every year. Every year you should be looking at it. I Yeah, I say that is, is top of the list. You think you wanna clean out your house or your closet, check out your belief systems <laughs> and what are you believing yeah the, the, you and i are so in alignment in so many ways because of of the work that we do i too am you know a self-proclaimed self-help junkie but but always in in the state of um it's not really self-help self-improvement self-awareness self-discovery is more of it and I am so curious and want to know more and more and more. And the more the the great thing about this is I heard this expression. If you want to expand, you want anything to expand or multiply, you have to subtract, right? And the subtraction is 
the limiting beliefs that you've been carrying around all your life, the old beliefs that you believe are true versus what it is you choose to believe instead. And that's, that's a hard thing for people to wrap their minds around, that there actually is a choice there, a decision there, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah because your belief is an environment. Right. And so you're basically creating the environment. Is that environment conducive to your goals? And if it's not, then you need to change it. And I agree that you you should subtract, but also replace, because often when you leave a gap, it, it's it's very challenging for for individuals to just go from believing something and then taking taking that away and leaving nothing there. So I would say replace the belief and then keep it an evidence journal. Because what happens is, is when you make a choice to change your belief, and it is a choice, then you start to see evidence of those, you know, that belief, and you start to see it everywhere, and you just write it down, and that reinforces it. There's other ways to change your beliefs, but that's a great way to do it. And it's kind of similar to where you, you go out and you buy a car, and you think nobody else has that car, you know, you're buying something, and then all of a sudden you see that car everywhere because it just became part of your consciousness. And that's similar to how the beliefs are. So it's, yeah, I would definitely start there. And there's a lot of science to this. This is not just woo woo, as they say, it's also true, true. <laughs> I got that from one of my colleagues years ago. Oh, I love that. To say that, and, and you know, there's science behind this. I love that. I love the concept of an evidence journal so true because the evidence is all around us it's so interesting this is this has nothing but everything to do with what you just said this weekend i spent uh i went and spent time with my kids my twins and i said you know i want to take you shopping i want to get get you guys some stuff for your apartments you know and and i just want to treat you and and i, I wanted to give right? I went from a place of giving. And so as I'm getting ready to go up to the weekend, I went in my wallet and I was like, I, you know, I really want to pay cash for this stuff because, you know, that way, if there's a problem, they can easily exchange it or whatever, because I'm in San Diego, they're up in LA. And so I counted the cash that I had in my wallet and I said, oh, should I get any more? You know, this should be enough, but I don't know. It was in within $10 with no thought of how much like i wasn't tallying because i just thought well maybe i'll pay in cash maybe i'll pay most of it in cash put the rest of my car. like that's kind of the amount of thought i put into it and when i went back and realized oh my god with intention it was that subtle so the point is your beliefs about what you what you do believe is true what you can attract what you can have what you can do is so important to understand how you're thinking about it, you're feeling about it, and you're speaking about it because you will get evidence of that. Yeah. So, so what do you believe? I can't wait to hear your answer about this. What do you believe about putting together, um, you know, being specific about your partner? Putting the, the, the height aside, you know, mm -hmm. when you're specific, how specific should you be? So I think that specificity is really important to help you understand your why. Because if you if you say, well, I, I really want a tall man in my life. Why? Do you feel unsafe? Do you feel like they're going to protect you? Do you feel like because I can show you evidence of other things that could change your mind about that. I do a whole talk about short men, for example. I'm just giving that as an example, right? Or if you say, well, he has to have uh, uh, an advanced degree. Well, I might, you know, you want to know why. Why do you need that? Because do you really just want someone who's intelligent, who is uh, well-groomed, who's accomplished? I know a lot of people, including Bill Gates, who doesn't have a degree, right? So it's really like it's good to make that list but the list is really meant to inform you of why you want these things and also are you ready for them right because often we want things that we're not ready for and yeah. so that will guide that 
inner discussion. Yes. And you know what else I think is, um, yes, are you ready for them? And also, what would you say to getting in a relationship like the, as soon as or when then I like when I lose the 10 pounds then I'll start dating, you know, those kinds of things. I right. I same with me, but that never going to happen that there is also the opportunity to be with someone and grow together and get better together. Right. That's what all relationships are about. It's about yeah. growing and learning together because I'm a relationship expert. I've been at this for many, many years. And this past weekend, I had a very challenging time with my husband. So yeah. I will continue to have to put effort into this relationship for it to grow. They say the grass is greener where you water it. And you know, you might lose your patience. You may want to get out of the situation. But then when you stop and you reflect back and say, okay, what is happening inside of me and why am I reacting this way? That's what relationships help you to see, including relationships with your family, with your children. Anytime you get triggered, you want to understand why is this, why am I feeling this way? Because it's happening inside of you. Nobody creates your emotions. They don't force you to do anything. You're your own person. You always have agency. And it's really important to continue to always know this, that you have agency. There's a lot of power with that. That's really powerful. Really powerful, Arlene. Oh, oh my God, this is so good. So, all right. So I have so many questions that I, that I want to ask you. I mean, what are your thoughts about, um, um, love at first sight. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a tough one. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot of mixed data on that. So honestly, I don't think that there's a true answer for that. I will say that the majority of love at first sight come, you know, the people who truly believe in that are men because FYI men are more romantic and they fall in love faster. I know that mm -hmm. women think the opposite, but that's not the case. Uh, so there's a lot of data out there, but there's no real um, answer. Uh, and if, if I had to err on a, on a particular answer would be, no, that's not necessarily true because true love, when you're in a relationship where you will tolerate certain things or you'll care for someone, that develops over time. And so often what you feel initially in, in this elusive spark that everybody's always chasing, which is like the worst possible thing, right? Because <laughs> the spark could be anxiety, right? It may not be love or whatever, but the true love happens over time. The initial interaction is more infatuation. It's um, lust. It, it's a number of things. You know, you release certain hormones um, that attract you to someone, but I, I don't believe that that's true love. Although some people will report after many years of being together that, oh my God, I knew from the moment I met them. But also keep in mind that our memory plays tricks on us and we you know, transform how things happen to accommodate what we believe, which is cognitive dissonance, right? We're always trying to um, you know, prove to ourselves that the beliefs that we have are accurate. And so if we have to rewrite a story, we will do that. Yes. Uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about this all the time that like 95% of the stories that we're sharing are about our past are things that didn't even happen. Right. Yeah. So that's so powerful. So um, what, uh, what, how much do you share at the beginning? Like when you're just meeting somebody, how much is is enough or and or too much to share? Like, because you've heard the things. Uh, I've I had a matchmaking company, which was a disaster, by the way. I'm not saying they all are. Just personally, for me, that was, and I know why, Arlene. I wasn't ready. A hundred percent, I wasn't ready. You know, and after my divorce, every relationship that I, you know, every man that I met was geographically undesirable. They weren't in the same city. Like I was so not ready, right? Um, but but my point is, when you're when I was with the matchmaking company, I heard you know, don't talk about this, don't share too much about that. You know, initially in the first meeting, it was very very 
surface. Like, mm -hmm. you know, what books do you enjoy reading? And what do you enjoy doing for fun? What kind of food do you like? You know, that kind of thing. What is your take on that? Well, okay. So my take on this would be, if you're using online platforms, for example, which most people are, and you're meeting for the first time, I call that kind of a zero date. And I know people think, well, you know, we're just going to meet for coffee or we're going to go for a walk. That's perfectly okay. You don't want to invest a lot of time in a situation that may not be appropriate for you. So what I would say is, is you, you have this zero date to really assess if the chemistry is there because chemistry can only be obtained through, you know, physically being in the same room together. In other words, you get to say hello, maybe do a kiss on the cheek and you get a whiff of their scent, not just their cologne. Mm -hmm. We're all animals. <laughs> we might be civilized and everything else, but the scent is a very important part of, of you know, how you're attracted to someone. You also yeah. get to interact with them and see how they laugh, their mannerisms, how they communicate. If you're in a place where you're interacting with other people like waiters or whatever, you get to see how they interact with other people, right? So that's the zero date. Date two, where it's, and that should be a very short date. That's just to assess, yes, this is good. Let's schedule a real date. The mm -hmm. second date is more about storytelling because often people show up on a date to ask questions and it's like uh, an interview and it's off-putting and, and if people really knew the right questions to ask to begin with, it may not be so bad, but often they're very, um, the kind of questions that, that someone might be, might be a chameleon dater and therefore is trying to give you the answers that they think you want to hear and they're not being authentic. But when they're storytelling, when you're sort of giving uh, examples of your core values in a story, whether it happened to you or happened to someone else, and then you give them the opportunity to react to that story or tell you their story, it, it's a little bit, um, it's much better. And it's not this rapid fire questions and everything else, but to really get to the root of the, the answer to your question is too much too soon is not ideal no matter what, how you slice it, it's good to be intentional, but too much too soon scares people away because we're in an environment where most daters are looking for red flags. And so when there's too much too soon, right away the flags go up, even if you're being authentic and you're really, you know, I mean, I'll give you an example and then um, just a quick one. I had a woman who was fabulous, you know, very accomplished. I introduced her to this wonderful man. He was very intentional about wanting to be married and she wanted to be married and have children. And she was 40 and we were like, okay, the clock is ticking, ticking. Let's get this done. I introduced her to this guy and he starts talking about how he wants to be married and she wants to run for the hills because she thought it was too much too soon. And and I'm like, okay, but this is what you were looking for, is it not? And so <laughs> this is what happens. People just freak out because they're just looking for red flags. Yeah, that's powerful. <laughs> they are looking for red flags. That is so true. They're looking for, and you know, I get the psychology behind that. They're looking for what's what's wrong instead of for what's right because they're fearful, afraid, they've been hurt before, and I'd rather reject you before you can get a chance to reject me because that's what I think I'm doing to protect myself, mm -hmm. right? It's something along the lines of, of that. And I I could see that. I, um, I, I was say the thing about that, you know, part of it is that we are negative, we're wired negative because our mind or our brains are trying to protect us Yes, 100%. So, so that's why we're looking for those red flags. So we have to actively be mindful. And when you're operating and you're, you know, being conscious of what you're doing, you're being intentional, then you don't approach things with the negativity. You're really looking for ways to what what's good, what's right. Nothing's going to be perfect. You're not perfect. You're not going to meet a perfect person. And so it's really important for us to not allow the programming of negativity because it's trying to protect you um, to run our lives. And that's how people don't have success because they're focused on the negative. They're allowing the scripts to run instead of being intentional and being mindful. Yes, I'm gonna put you on the spot. So based on all your research, what percent of success 
What's the success rate in matchmaking? I don't think anybody really has a true answer to that because matchmaking is not just about getting you into a relationship that leads to marriage. There are people who just started dating again and yes. don't even know where to begin. And so they need that guidance to really help them you know, meet people, or if you're divorced and all your friends are married and you have, you don't really have the network to really get out there and meet someone again. So it's one of those questions that people ask, but there, I, good luck finding a matchmaker who truly tracks her success rate because the success can be any one of those things. It's not right. just leading to marriage. It's not just leading to marriage. That makes a lot of sense. Um, what for you do you see has been the biggest challenge in in all of this you know build, you know your own and then as you're developing this what have you seen as some of the challenges developing in terms of you mean the the referral network or referral, yep and so and, mm -hmm. yeah okay. so what we're finding is that well first and foremost this network is really geared towards eliminating this wild, wild west scenario because anybody could be a matchmaker. The truth is, is even though I was part of a school that certified matchmakers, um, anybody can just say that they're a matchmaker and start doing it. And so my goal with this is to really weed out the people who are not doing good work, who have mm -hmm. bad reputations, because I really want people to be served in, in the best way possible. And then I'm also training matchmakers through this love pro mastermind because i think it's important for matchmakers even you know if they're single to also work on their relationships as well because that helps because as you are dealing with that you're more able to understand um it makes you feel more authentic not that there's anything wrong with being a single matchmaker you know um if you want to be single that's perfectly fine um so yeah so that's been somewhat of a challenge just finding the right people. And so we're doing, you know, we're checking backgrounds and things like that. But in terms of getting people into a relationship, I also want them to understand that sometimes matchmaking is not the answer. Sometimes it is actual coaching. People think that they can't get into a relationship through coaching. The fact is, is that I, I got, uh, um, I had a, psych, a psychologist who's on TV you know, did some coaching with me and I got to go to her wedding because we got her out of a certain mindset that wasn't really serving her. And we were able to get her into a relationship and married. So it's not always just bringing the fish, it's teaching you how to fish as well. Yes, it's so true. And I love that you shared that. That's so good. Yeah, I, I've, um, in my coaching, a few people have gotten together and gotten in relationships too. And relationships have been repaired, like mm -hmm. mothers and daughters who are totally, totally broken, no communication. Now, oh, it gives me goosebumps. They're closer than ever. It's such a powerful thing, you know, coaching in general, and especially in this area, because, you know, we know that as coaches, we know the big three, it's relationships, it's health and it's, and it's money and finances. Those are the three core areas of our lives that somebody is working on at least one of them, if not all three of them when they're seeking help and relationships in general dating. Yes, is important. Of course, that's what we're talking about because quite frankly, my belief, my belief is that that is one of the, you know, one of the most beautiful, experiences that we came here in human experience to have is divine loving relationship. That's my belief. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, relationships in general and communication is so important that um, we need the coach. We need the support group. We need the other, we need the expertise of somebody else to show us what we can't see for ourselves right? Because we're in it. It's like the fish in water looking for water. We're, we're in it. So that's why I'm, you know, that's why I'm a coach. That's why I hire coaches. And I know that's why you do what you do, because you got to be willing to be brave enough and vulnerable, vulnerable enough to say, I, I need coaching. I need the coach to do that. 
And like you, uh, there are good coaches out there and there are not good coaches out there. So I love that you are training these matchmakers and you're not only just training them, have a school to train them, but now you're supporting them in your mastermind too, to continue their growth so they can continue to be better, right? You should always, if you're not growing, you're dying. So your growth comes through knowledge and information and being open. And I agree with you wholeheartedly that everyone deserves to love and be loved. And as humans, we when we're born, we can't even exist by ourselves. We need we need connection. We need a, a mother or a father to to guide us as babies. And and through life, I think people need connection. And a part of the disconnect is the the lack of self awareness that people yeah. have. Um, and you know, self awareness through not realizing what their true beliefs are versus what they've been told to believe. Um, and so they can't find happiness in somebody else's formula. You need to create your own formula to to attract the right partner and to have you know that happiness that you see. You know, I see people even in their careers where the parents tell them you have to be a doctor or or a lawyer, and then they get there and they're miserable, and maybe become an actor and become famous. I know there are a few actors or people like this is just an example, but it's really important to be true to yourself and to be self aware. And so that's a huge issue. And I just want to say one thing about the loneliness epidemic that it's literally the equivalent of having 15 cigarettes a, a day. Um, you can die of loneliness. It is a problem. And, and the only way to address it is through connection. And I'm finding more and more, I mean, there are countries like in Japan where people aren't getting married, they're not having children, their birth rate has gone down significantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, by the same token, you want the right partner because a partner will regulate your your blood pressure. I mean, the impact of a partner in your life is really significant. So if you're in the wrong relationship, it will make you literally sick. So this is a, an area that is becoming more of a focus and I hope that it expands more and more each day because for humans, this is what we need, connection, the right connection. Uh, that's so important that you just shared all that. And I'm so, I hope the audience is getting this. I hope, I hope, I hope. All right, so a couple more questions for you. Uh, two more questions, and then you'll share with the audience how they can find out more about you. The first question I wanna ask you is one that I ask all my guests, which is how do you live the I have today way? which is intentionally in the present moment. And if you don't mind, will you answer it by starting it with, I have today too. I have today to be authentic. For someone who has gone through cancer, when you see, we're, we're all gonna arrive at death successfully, but when you see it coming sooner because you get a diagnosis or something, and by the way, I'm fine, um, it helps you to be more intentional in what you do. And because you want to leave a mark and you want to have some sort of legacy. So that's really important to me. And this is why I do the work that I do to really impact lives. So beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Of course. All right. And then the, the last question is, what do you wish more people knew? I kind of talked about it already. Uh, I do wish that more people knew the importance of knowing thyself so that you can attract the right partner and be able to have a sustainable, healthy relationship. It's beautiful. So beautiful. All right. Where can people find out more information about you? Well, I want to direct them to the Worldwide Referral Net Network, which is www network.com and this is absolutely free to join and it just gives you an opportunity to potentially meet a VIP client or if you're looking to hire a matchmaker you'll know that you're going to find the right matchmaker who's reputable who's ethical and who's trained really and so I, I want to encourage people to go there because I am on a mission to end this loneliness epidemic and I think this is a great place to start. You are well on your way, Arlene, well on your way. This has been such a powerful conversation. I'm so grateful that you came here to spend time with us and everybody go to www.network.com. We will have this in the show notes as well and follow Arlene 
Arlene Washburn. She's amazing. And I know that you and I will be collaborating and working together on other things because there's so much alignment in what we do. So uh, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate you. Thank you. It was amazing. Thank you, Diane. You are so welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. That was fantastic. Gosh, I hope you got a lot of nuggets and takeaways. Such an important show. Make sure you stay till the end because I am going to do the mantra meditation where I'm going to anchor in everything that Arlene shared with us today. So make sure you stay tuned in for that. And before we get to that mantra meditation, I want to share with you an opportunity to come join me for my upcoming event. I've got an event coming up. It's called TV Hostmaker Live. If you are out there, you're an expert or an entrepreneur, a professional, and you want to get your message out to the world in a global way on a much bigger scale and um, gain more impact and income, credibility and authority, get in the media more, land those high, uh, high end clients, hosting your own TV show, is one of the ways to do it. And what I'm going to do over the three days is I am going to teach you my 40 years of experience in advertising and television industry in three days, how to launch your own brilliant TV show. And by the end of that event, you are going to have your completed TV show guidebook with everything in there. You'll be ready to launch your TV show as soon as the next day. So, Watch this video to learn more about it and get registered now while we still have early bird pricing going on. So take a listen to this. What can I say about Diane Foster? Diane Foster has such a long history of expertise and experience. I knew I'd be able to learn a lot of information from her. I would feel so bad if I did not tell you what an amazing teacher she is and that you need to launch your own TV show and let Diane show you how to do it. It's live training for people who want to be a TV host, and I've had so much fun. I've learned a lot. I've been a TV host for well over 30 years, and I love how simple she makes it sound for people to do what they've always dreamed about, which is have their own TV show. If you want to differentiate yourself from your competitors, you need to be like Diane Foster. I launched my own TV show called Pivot Now, I mean, it's amazing how it just took off. I'd recommend it to anybody who's thinking about starting a show. Diane is a professional and I'm really excited to be working with her. Two weeks ago, I would never have thought that I'd come here and be at this event meeting the most amazing people and having the experience that I've had and then learning that the wealth of wisdom that she's provided, it is beyond what I could have imagined. I had a great time learning so much from it. I learned a lot from Dari Diane. I think you are very inspirational. And made me realize I needed a bigger goal and she helped me to step up into my courageousness. I can now open up my own TV network show to have a platform on which I can serve this woman from a higher place. And what I so appreciate about today is her integrity, her spirit, her true caring, showing up, um, I'm coaching with her now as well, and we all think way too small, and she makes you think a lot bigger. She provides the support, the information, the administrative detail, all the technical side, and really puts it in a wonderful user-friendly package. You're going to love her material. It's so easy to, to learn from her. And so I just can't recommend any more strongly. Launch your own TV show, embrace the future, and make an impact on the world. All right, so here is your chance to get in right now. Go to www.tvhostmaker.com forward slash live, www.tvhostmaker.com forward slash live. Now what's gonna happen at this event? There's also a QR code on the screen if you're watching us versus listening to us. Uh, what's gonna happen at this event is we have epic industry expert speakers coming in. We're going to cover the media industry, AI, tech, o the OTT platforms and the TV networks out there. The amount of opportunity for you, content providers are looking for 
incredible content. You need to be able to produce a really good show. And that is what you're going to learn at this event. So I spent 20 years at ABC. I've been a host of my own show for six years. I've helped hundreds of people launch their own shows and it's about doing it right. So you're going to learn my star method, which is my proprietary teachings that have been supported and endorsed by the Columbia School of Broadcasting. So if you're out there on social media, you want are putting yourself out there, why don't you do it smart by launching a TV show because it's an asset that you actually get to own and you can monetize it in multiple ways. I'm going to teach you 20 of those ways. So join us because this is a virtual event. It is three days. It is interactive. It is live. You can do it from the comfort of your own home. Make this your time to make your dream of becoming a TV star a reality. So I can't wait to see you there. All right. All right. Great. Okay, well, let's get into our mantra meditation. This has been a fantastic show. So what we're gonna do is just, it's just a few minutes. We are going to take in two deep breaths and this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna breathe in for the count of four, pull that air all the way down to your tailbone, your root chakra. And then I want you to hold it for the count of eight. And as you're counting in your head to eight, I'm gonna be counting out loud. I want you to send energy to all eight of your chakras, your root, your sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye crown, and your soul star, which is about a foot or so above your head. It's a very important one. The color for that is white. And that clears away the residue so that you can receive the ideas, the information, the guidance that's coming at you all the time. It opens up the channel for that. So as you're counting to eight and holding your breath and lighting those, those chakras all up, you're sending healing energy to everything in your body. It's so good. Then I want you to breathe out for the count of eight, like you're blowing out birthday candles. And the visualization there is you are getting rid of every toxic memory, emotion, wound, any negative energy that might be trapped in your body, your, your physical or your astral body. You're just breathing it right out. It's going to feel so good. We're going to do that twice. I'm going to walk you through it. So don't worry about it. If you are driving, obviously you can't do this. You can tune in and listen, but do not close your eyes for this part. For everybody else, we're about to do this and then just listen to my words. So here we go. Close your eyes. Now breathe in for the count of four through your nose. Hold it as we send energy to those chakras. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Blow it out for eight. Your abdomen should feel like a deflated balloon. Should feel really good. Let's do that again. Breathe in for four through the nose. Pull it down. Hold it as we count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And breathe it out. I have today to love my life. Something really good is going to happen to me today. I can feel it. Miracles, big and small. I notice them all. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. I have today to crack the code on my intimate relationship. I now have an understanding that you can actually die of loneliness and that true love and connection are a huge part of this earthly experience. And I am going to take the time to spring clean my belief systems every year, open myself up to new beliefs, new ways of being, and truly know myself. I'm going to learn that the object and the idea of true love means that we get to be better together. We get to learn, grow, and expand together because if we are not growing, we are dying. There's only expansion, and I want to be a part of that. I know I'm already perfectly imperfect. I am good with that. I am a work of art and a work in progress at the same time. I'm going to let go of those 
specific details that I thought I wanted in a partner and understand what the true value of a relationship is. And that is aligning with somebody who gets me, who I get, and that it's not actually about me getting, it's about me giving. And that feels really, really good. I'm not going to be afraid anymore. I'm going to process through emotions and limiting beliefs and pain from my past and know that I have today to start fresh and new and that I am worthy of the most divine loving relationship in all relationships of my life, not just the romantic ones. And that this time on this journey is so limited and I am going to show up and be the love that I want to attract into my life. And I'm going to surround myself with others who support me. I'm going to get the help and support I need so that others can see what I can't see for myself because I'm worthy. I deserve it. I want it. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to my guest, Arlene Washburn, for being here today. And I want to thank you for being here at I Have Today. Your viewership and listenership mean the world to us. Uh, if this is your first time here again, or if you've been here before, tune into my channel. We have hundreds of episodes for you that all are about the art of intentional living. We'll see you next time. Again, this is Diane Forster. Make sure to follow me, Diane Forster Official, and I have today with Diane Forster. Take care. Sending you love. Bye-bye.